Okay, well, the final thing that I really want to show you is just uh, how we can mess around with this uh, world matrix. Because if you remember, I, I said that y you can do not just rotations, like we do here. We set up uh, the world matrix to be to rotate the object around the Y axis by a certain angle. Uh, but you can do scalings, and you can also do translations. Um, scalings are essentially making the object bigger or smaller uniformly depending on which axis you're talking about so you can scale on the uh, X axis, the Y axis or the Z axis uh, you know you make the object thinner, fatter depending on which axis you're talking about but anyway I'll show you I'll show you a bit about how to do that uh, the first thing I'll do is just change this to Z because we're going to spin it like a propeller instead of the merry-go-round analogy that I was talking about so it's spinning like a propeller like that now um, and then I'm going to show you how we can actually implement multiple transformations at once so really the first thing I'm going to do is declare a couple more matrices a rotation matrix and a scale matrix called rotation mat and scale mat um, and what I'm going to do is assign this rotation matrix to the output of D3 DX matrix rotation Z so now this rotation matrix corresponds to rotating the object around a certain angle on the Z axis and I'm going to create a scale matrix with the D3 DX matrix scaling function provided by D3 Direct3D hook it up with our scale mat which we declare here and essentially this is scaling along the X the Y and the Z axes now if we pick the Z uh, the value is 1 and scaling essentially works like multiplication you know um, 1 has no effect just like multiplying anything by 1 uh, has no effect so on the z-axis we're not having any, you know, we're doing nothing at all we're not scaling at all but on the x and the y axes we're actually scaling it by this function here which is a half sine of an angle plus a half and if any you know a bit of maths, all this is is just a continuous function from 0 to 1 and then back down to 0 so it's just a nice smooth flowing 0 up to 1 then down to 0 then up to 1 again it's a nice sine wave and we're doing that on the x and the y axes um, and then now we've got our two matrices that correspond to rotation and the other one corresponding to scale we can exploit one of the handy one of the handy things about matrices and that's if we have two matrices that are responsible for different transformations when we multiply them together we can receive a matrix which will do both at the same time so this matrix does a rotation this matrix does a scale we multiply them together Oops. we multiply them together and we get the world matrix which is a combination of rotation and scaling so this matrix will rotate and it will scale our object in the same matrix and we'll pass that to our graphics card with the set transform method of our device and then if I run that I'll show you what it looks like here it is we're rotating and we're scaling the object i.e. making it bigger and smaller by this uniform sign function by this continuous sign function so it's going down to nothing and then up to the one times the size of the object then down to nothing again and it'll do this you know it'll do this forever because <laughs> sign is you know an infinitely long continuous function pretty nice and the last thing I'm just going to show you is something with translation as well so if we just create another matrix 
call translate mat and then we can use another d3dx matrix function called d3dx matrix translation hook it up with our translate mat variable here and then we're translating it on the x direction, the y direction and the z direction i.e. we're moving it sine of some angle in the x direction we're not moving it any units in the y direction, we're not moving it any units in the z direction and this is just a continuous function that goes from minus one to one so it's going to move like this across the screen and then we need to hook that up with our compound transformation as well to make sure that our world matrix will transform according to a translation so we just times it like that simple as that and now our world matrix will rotate, scale and translate for us according to what we've just defined and if I run that there you go it's rotating, it's going from zero and then up to one times the shape of the object and it's also translating across the x-axis look I'm moving my mouse across the x-axis and it's translating there and I guess that's the end of this lesson thanks very much